The first job that we're doing back in the garden room series is the ceiling of the lap pool. And the reason why we need to do that is because we have a temporary floor structure over the top of here, which enables us to work on the ceiling. So what is involved on the ceiling? So it's all insulated. The ventilation is above the insulation, so it's a cold roof. We're gonna be putting a decent air membrane in. We just gotta staple that up, tape the joints, and then we're gonna counter batten. Then we'll be putting the thermo wood cladding over the top, and we'll be connecting this with the lamello, which is a brilliant plastic clip, which goes into a pea groove, clicks together, locks together. And that means that we can get a much better yield out of our cladding. Instead of cutting them back with the lamello, we can basically use the off cut and start and then use a full one, off cut, off cut again. So we don't lose any material and the joint will travel down the roof in like, a, like an angle, if you like, like a, a uniform pattern and it will look really nice. So the reason we can do that is because it's tongued and grooved. So the edges are supported top and bottom and you've also got this lovely connection on the end. We're using thermo wood. Thermo wood is absolutely perfect for anywhere where there's high levels of moisture. Indeed, we use it outside, doesn't need treating. It's perfect for saunas and that sort of yeah. stuff too. Uh, so we're gonna get on, get the membrane up, tape the joints and then counter batten. To make this job work, we have got our timber all facing in the same direction. So what that means is when we bought the cladding up and stacked it, we stacked it so it would be from here straight onto the bench with the back of the cladding against the fence. We've made an extra long saw table here. The idea is we put a length of cladding in the saw. Okay, against our fence, bang. We trim the end, we re remove any defects from the end, if it's out of square, for example. So we'll take that off the end. Then we'll run that bit of cladding all the way through. And we'll do the same on the other end, clean it up. Then we'll push it down to a stop. This stop here represents the distance between my beams, the cladding run. And that there goes all the way back down to the blade edge here. So that distance there is the length of each course. So then we get the next piece of cladding. You get the idea, straight onto the bench. I'm not having to measure anything. Let's trim the end, butt it up here to that one, and then cut it off. And then I've got a full course. That gets then lamelloed. We'd go bang, bang, straight in and up, done. Then with the off cut that we've got, let's say this was the off cut, that goes straight into here. Full board, boom, boom, boom. And that's it, no measuring at all, no marking at all. We'll probably do cut six or eight courses, fix six or eight courses, because they're all different size parts, we need to lay them out then in a position where we can just get them straight up and in, in an order without getting a bit muddled up. So that's it, so that's how we're gonna do that. We've also got our membrane here on a roll. Just makes it a little bit easier. All we have to do is just slot the roll up like this. We've got two little supports. One has got a hole which doesn't go all the way through. The other one has got a slot. We've got a bit of 22 millimeter copper pipe here, which goes in the roll. And so I'll try it on my own. It's probably a two man job. We'll just pop that into there like so. And then slide the roll in and just lock it in. The other side's a horseshoe, effectively. Then we can just get our membrane, pull it out and measure it, cut it off, and it's dead square as well, because you'll see that as, as the membrane comes back to our saw fence, it's all dead square. Because what we want to do, it's very expensive, this membrane. We want to make sure we get the best yield out of it. We've got four runs and a rip. And even when you're ripping, when it's on here as well, sometimes I just stand a Stanley blade up and pull it all the way through the blade and it gets a lovely parallel cut. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna get in there now, get the vapor up, counter batten it. So we are gonna have our vapor membrane lapping down onto the glue lamp. So when we put our perimeter batten round, it will trap it back there nicely. 
and form a decent seal everywhere. So what we've got here is this batten is about 50 mil less than the width of the first course, if you like, of the vapor barrier. And we'll get this nice and straight by popping the batten on the underside of the rafter and we'll mark it. I'm too low, you better get on and do that. Yeah. What we're gonna do to make it easier is we just keep some of these blocks in our pouch and they've got a screw in. We'll pull it up and we'll just pop one of these in instead of trying to staple it and then square it up because a staple generally never wants to hold. But this will clamp it in position because the screw is in the middle, it will still rotate so we can pull it left, put it right and get it sort of exactly where we want it. And then we can go around fixing it and stapling it and then ready for the counter pattern. So that's what we're going to do. I've got about 50 going around the corner. How's yours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's clamped my end. Now you'll do the same your end. I'm just going to hold the middle so it's not sagging. Right, so now just come and hold the middle like I'm doing. So I can get a middle block in. The idea is you want to get, you know, to there, that's it. And then we'll kind of fix the middle there. And then we'll do the same in the bottom of yours. Mine's pretty good, my end. Mine's good here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So once we had the vapour barrier up and it was all taped, we ran our battening, which is really straightforward and easy. They were all the same length once we'd worked them out. We had one trapped up against the ridge, one down against the sort of base, if you like, the glue lamp at the bottom. And then we fixed through the side of one into the glue lamp's either side, which trapped the vapour barrier. So it was really nicely sealed everywhere. And then um, it was just a matter of repeating the process on the opposite side of the roof and we were there ready to get on with the cladding so um, a really nice job out of the way. So the vapour barrier is all up on the ceiling now and we have some cabling in which is going to serve some lights obviously, some outdoor lights and some indoor lights as well. So there's the ceiling all ready to be cladded now and we are getting ready so the first courses that are going to go all the way along either side of the ridge will be ripped down with a bevel so they butt tight against the ridge there and then we'll be working our way from the top to the bottom on both sides this is a lot easier this side because we've got a position we can just go past and then our stud wall which is going to get built up from from this concrete edge here all the way up is going to sit on those last couple of courses of cladding so that's very simple there we've got no scribe nothing to butt into on the opposite side where we've got our lower glue lamb we're going to have to put a scribe or a rip all the way through now i've gauged it up so we've got a gauge rod which is which represents each course okay so i've just made a gauge rod of 10 courses or so it was just a piece of wood i had long enough We've marked the battens with that gauge rod either side and we've strung lines all the way through. So when we're putting our courses in, we've got the lines to reference our courses. You can still measure down to the glue lamb and check your parallel because you can add an, a millimetre to the gap and gain it. If you need 10 mil, just add 10, 10 courses, add a millimetre at one end. We have got a system in place that we can cut them without measuring. Then we're going to lamello join them together, which means that we don't have to cut them back onto a rafter. Because they're tongued and grooved, with the lamello they're completely self-supporting, a little bit like an engineer floor which is tongued and grooved all round. And then, so these are the first sets. We're working on both sides at the same time, which means that they will match. We'll have the same lengths in the same positions on opposite sides and the joints will run across the roof 
uh, in a very similar fashion. So it's just a sort of a nice way of uh, doing it. So you've got some uniformity. Here's the saw table. This would be the first one of the next course because that off cut gets slid all the way down the table to the stop end. It goes against the stop end. We've deliberately got a gap here. So any dust that comes along falls out so it doesn't push against there and we gain a millimeter or so. So that would come all the way down. The next full board would go in and the next board would go in and we would form a course. Then the off cut would go to the end and so on and so forth. So this is our pile of thermo wood cladding. It's been sorted, stacked and in the right direction. So it goes straight from here onto the saw and away. Then what Ed's gonna be doing is he'll be doing that cutting and then he's gonna be using the lamello the battery lamello, this is the new battery lamello, it's a great bit of kit. And he's gonna basically be doing the joints. Now, he's all set up to do some, so if we, if, if we get Ed to, to show us exactly what that is. So he's got males and females, so he's got the, the, the piece that slides into one end, obviously, and then the piece that goes in the other end, which clicks them together. So if we get him to do these ones that he's got ready, basically it. So that's how Ed will prepare the courses. Then he will deliver them through to me up on the scaffolding. And we've got a fairly good process, so that should be pretty cool. So we'll get on and get it done. So we've got the first eight courses in. We've done four either side of the ridge. And if you would come through and have a look at that, what we've done is we've done matching courses. So the top course on both sides is exactly the same, except so you've got the same length piece there, then the same length piece there, which puts the joints in opposite positions, which is really nice. And then as we're coming through every single course now, we're gonna have the same joints in the same position. Now it's a bit sort of academic because they're so good, these lamellos, when you click them together, that you really don't even see the joint. And from down here, obviously, you can hardly see them at all. It's inevitable that you're gonna have joints. Now, the reason why we're doing this lamello is the fact that we haven't got to cut back up to 560 millimeters to get back on to the last rafter. And because we've got so many courses of this, we'd be wasting a lot of material. You'd be ending up doing that every other course or something like that. So that would more than cost for the price of the connector. And it's really quite easy for me. I'm up there, Ed's doing the cutting. He's preparing the lamello on the end. He's bringing them through in the courses to me. I'm able to get the first two bits in clicked in, click the last one in, and then go along and attach them with the stainless steel brads. So it's a really nice system as well. The lamello means that I can click one end in, it's, otherwise I've got to have someone else there. So you think about the hidden cost of labor if I had a third man here holding the other end, because anyone who does any kind of cladding, especially upside down on an angle, trying to knock a tongue in, because timber is naturally wany, okay, until it's flattened and fixed back, you will get a bit where you knock it in one end, you start trying to ease it through, and as you knock the other end in, the other opposite one that you put in first will just ease out and it could effectively drop to the ground. 
With the lamello, I can fix the first piece, click the second piece in, put one nail towards the end, and then just ease it out of the tongue and the groove to enable me to click my last lamello in, push it back, and then using the rubber mallet, tap it all the way up, and it goes together beautifully. Yes, we've got a gauge line everywhere, as you saw. We're pinging lines through to the courses. That enables us to get from top to bottom and land the right amount of expansion joint in between each piece of that cladding. Sometimes the tongues have a little bit of um, defect on them, which is absolutely normal. So when you push them together, you might push one too tight and everything else, it runs out. So we're gonna crack on now, finish the entire front right down to the bottom. When we get to the bottom, we are going to leave the bottom two courses held with trim screws for now because when we get the electrical fittings here, we'll take those out, we'll bring the cables through exactly where we need them and then we'll put them back and possibly still fix those with a very tiny headed trim screw. done 99% of this side. We've got one more course, it's the bottom course. And I would say that that's the one which if anyone's gonna give you any aggro, it's possibly the bottom course. So the top course we put in with a backing bevel so it would meet the glue lamb ridge. Now the glue lambs are really nice and straight so there's no reason why when you got from top to bottom, you're nice and parallel at the end. So how we did that is we always gauge everything out just like a bricklayer gauges his courses of bricks, okay? And we gauged all the way down both sides to enable us to get as, as close to a full cover as we can at the bottom. Now what that means is, is this section is a sample of what we will rip. So it's got that bevel on it, and this will pretty much slot in anywhere and fit exactly as we want. So what we're gonna go and do now is rip that out on the saw and then bring the section in. Now this bottom one, and the next one up, we've just got on trim screws, okay, we've got some tongue and groove screws. These are the tongue and groove screws. They're super small. And we are screwing this on the course above through the back of the groove, so they're hidden. Now, they will be fixed, or they can be fixed properly, but we've got three IP rated electrical lights coming in here, which basically look back up at the roof slope, shine back up at the roof slope. So what we're gonna do is, until we've got the light fittings here, they may have drivers or whatever, and we may not always have to have them accessible, in which case we will only use one of these tiny headed trim screws here, these tongue groove flooring screws, to actually attach those bottom two courses. So they're always able to come off should an electrician need to, to get into them. So that's it, we'll rip this down next and we'll fit this last one. And then Ed's already making up the next courses on the other side. So just to recap, we've got a very long saw table. It has a set stop, which is a certain distance from the blade, okay? Which represents glue lamb to glue lamb. And that enables Ed to put a square end on the first one, slide it along, square end, and keep putting them in and gain courses. Then using the lamello, we're not having to cut back onto each rafter, and that could be up to 560 millimeters we'd be cutting off. And if we were doing that on every other course, say, and we've got all together, we've got something like 66 courses, it's nearly 33 meters or something like that. So it's quite a lot of material when you consider this cladding, for example, is the best part of five pounds a meter. So we're gonna get on now and get this side bought all the way down as far as the wall position, which is where I'm standing. This is gonna be the wall. The wall is formed from the floor that we're standing on right here. All of this OSB, 18 mil OSB, is on joists. Those joists become the studs. The OSB becomes grounds to fix everything to. And that'll be our next job once we've got the rest of this ceiling finished. So when we're ripping through, Basically, I don't wanna put this tongue against the fence because the tongues, just by 
the fact that you can see this one here as it's come out of the processing, it's getting thinner. So if I was ripping off of that tongue, then it's gonna get, gonna get smaller too. Equally, this groove at the back, the shoulder is proud of the face there, which has given us a few problems here and there. We've had to open our gauge up by an extra millimeter to make sure that we're not jamming all the time there. I've got a small section of hardwood. It's just temporarily glued to here so it can't move. It can still move along the table when, when I move that. And then I'll be taking this material and I'll be running it off the back of this shoulder. So I'll be pushing it against this piece of hardwood here and that will be giving me a perfectly parallel rip. If I was going off there and I've got an uneven tongue, it's gonna to do this, it's gonna travel. So we're gonna rip that one down and that'll be the one we're gonna go and put in. We've got two pieces which form the last course. We're getting both ripped down and fitted in. The last course is prepared. We've got a notch here which goes around that glue lamp post in the corner here. And basically we're ready to fire that one in. So we're gonna put this up just on a couple of these small screws, as I was saying a second ago, just to hold it. We won't drive those all the way home either. We'll just have it there so we can remove it at the right time for the electrician. Perfect. That's it, and I'll get the next one in. That's it, and just try it, we'll just try it for length first. Yeah, it's good on the length. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go put the tongue in now. A bit more tricky. The flatter, the better, that's it. And just leave the head right out so we don't put it right back here. That's sweet. That is a nice job. So the front side is complete and we're just working our way down to the back side as far as where the wall is gonna go at the end of the concrete shell, if you like, which is where all of the plant and bits and pieces go on the other side. So we've actually got every piece of cladding made, ready, jointed. There's another 13 courses to go. You can see it, this is effectively how the diminish is. So I'll talk about the joints. Because we're using this lamello, we're not creating any waste. The waste is very, very minimal. We're just trimming the ends up square and then using the cladding. We don't have to get a tape measure out once because we have the bench all set up and the bench enables us to literally just get the cladding from the pile. The ever diminishing pile, I might add, it's much, much smaller now, it's tiny. It goes from the pile onto the saw, square end, cut the square ends, slide it all the way through, butts up against the end here, slide the next one in, cut it, and so on, and then you end up with a course. And with the off cut that you generate from that course, you start at the end with that one and so on and so forth. And that's how we get this limited amount of waste. That's it. That is the last row for now that we need to put in. So basically we've done all of the ceiling that's visible on this side of the building. And what happens now is I have a wall which comes all the way up here and sits underneath these two uh, rows here. That's why we have some electrical cable coming down because they're actually positioned in that partition wall which forms the back wall of this room and these two doors here represent the plant room so you'll come in from the outside and there'll be all of the plant room the sand filters you know all of the um, heat exchangers and all that sort of stuff will be set behind here power so that's it that's the first stage of the job done the next stage will be take the floor off from here as I say this was a temporary job it's 18 mil OSB it's on uh, 145 by 47 joists, that's six by two in old money. They're gonna be turned into the wall which goes across the back. Some of this OSB is gonna clad the plant room walls that enables me to screw lots of things to it nice and easily. So I'll be taking it from here, cladding the back wall there, cladding the return behind 
the fuse board, the temporary fuse board, and that end over there. And then we'll put the studs up and see what we've got left for putting some grounds on this side. And then we're gonna be using a really good backer board, a cement based backer board. And that's gonna come down and we'll have a waterproof junction between the concrete pool shell and the backer board. So the render and the tiling can all be completely continuous straight over the top. So I hope you enjoyed that. Keep checking back. This series is gonna be going on now for a little while and it's gonna be fun.